Hi, in this video I'll demonstrate how to use the second version of the realistic embroidery plugin for Photoshop. So let's start installing the three files of the preset. Go to main window, actions, click the icon here at the top right corner, select load actions, select the action file and load it. And here you can see the four actions correctly installed. Then go to edit, preset manager, select brushes at the preset type and load the brush file. Do the same for the styles. Ok, now check that the files are correctly installed. Here are the four actions, the brush list and the styles. Ok, now open the template file provided in the package. This is a PSD file with a resolution of 3000 pixels at 300 dpi, but the preset works also at lower and higher resolutions. It contains also three background textures and a text for your first test. Ok, now before using the actions, select the brush tool and always make sure that the opacity and the flow of the brush are set to 100 and that the R brush mode is set to off. The workflow with this uh, plugin consists of three steps, one, two and three. The first step will create an initial setup and the borders around your source element. The second one will fill the areas inside of it and it is also repeatable. And the third one will reorganize all the layers and give the final look. There is also a fourth action, which is render borders only, and we will see this one later. So let's start using the action. Select the test the preset layer, select the first step setup and borders, and click play. As you can see, this first step created a border of red seams around the source element. You'll be able to change the colors later with a simple adjustment layer. And notice also the changes in the uh, layers panel and the newly generated layers, which are border, setup and source. Make sure you don't change the names of these layers, otherwise the next two steps will not work. Ok, now we can go on with the second step, select the fill pass and click play. As you can see, it started filling the areas inside of the source element and this second action can be repeated until the area is completely filled. So let's play it again. So two fill passes are enough to fill this preset text, but notice that there are a few empty pixels left, for example in the P or in the R. And this is not a problem because the third action will create a special layer called base pattern that will cover these uh, tiny areas. In any case, if this bothers you, you can delete border, setup and source too. Then make the source element a bit smaller. For example, 97%. Okay. And repeat the process again. Now we can go on with the third step, so select render all and click play. This action will create the final look and pack everything into a smart object. And here is the result of this third action. As you can see, everything was packed into the smart object and it was named realistic embroidery output. And notice that this layer has a mask channel and you can use it to hide small irregularities around the borders of the output. So for example, select the mask channel, select the brush with a black color, 
then select the standard brush uh, provided in the package and draw over the area for example here on the T where there are irregularities okay and if you want to repeat the whole embroidery process multiple times in the same PSD remember always to rename this smart object with a custom name so double click it and give it a custom name now before taking a look at the fourth action we will see the structure of layers inside of the main smart object and some customization methods so double click the thumbnail of the smart object to open it in this version of the plugin both the workflow and the structure of layers uh, were optimized as you can see now the structure of layer is uh, easier to understand so let's take a look at each layer starting from the bottom. First of all, we have a simple gray background which is hided initially and this layer is useful to have a better view during the customization. So unhide it, but also remember to hide it again when the customization is done. Then we have the cloth displacement layer. This layer visually connects the embroidered element to the texture underneath uh, simulating a cloth displacement you can change its opacity to make it more or less visible. Okay. Next, there is the fill layer, and this is the smart object generated during the second phase of the process, and you can modify its color and levels using the two adjustment layers above of it. And for example, double click the thumbnail of the color to change its color. Or the levels notice that these two layers are connected to the fill layer by a clipping mask and you can recognize it by this arrow pointing down and if for error you cancel the clipping mask during the customization phase you can restore it by right clicking the layer and selecting create clipping mask The base color of the fill layer is gray, so if you want to make it black or white, you can unhide the seam color adjustment layer and then use the levels to make it white or black. Now let's take a quick look inside the smart object fill. Double click its thumbnail to open it. Okay. As you can see, also here we have a gray background. Then we have the base pattern layer. The main role of this layer is to cover small areas left by the fill pass. Then we have the setup and the setup clone. And these are the two main layers that makes the fill pass. Okay. And at last we have the hairs layer, which is this one. And this simulates uh, small tiny hairs over the embroidered element and you can modify its opacity to make it more or less visible. Okay, remember always to hide the gray background before closing the smart object. Okay, we are back in the main smart object here and the next set of layer are the borders and also here you can modify color and levels using the adjustment layers okay let's take a look inside of the smart object borders as you can see here you have four option of borders unhide the background to see them better and choose your favorite border and you can also combine them once you've decided your combination of borders, hide the background and close and save the smart object. Here is the difference before and after. Last layer of the main smart object is the bevel layer and it adds some depth to the output. You may need to adjust uh, the depth and the size of the layer style bevel emboss depending on your source element. Okay, 
once you have finished with the customization, hide the gray background and close and save the smart object. Before and after. Now let's see how to apply gold and silver materials. Open the smart object again, then hide the two color control layers. Okay. Then open the styles panel. As you can see, the first two layer styles are silver and gold. So for example, if you want to apply the silver, select the fill and click on silver. Then select borders, silver. Okay. And now you can use the level controls to adjust to tweak the output. Now let's see how to use the last action, render borders only. And you can use this if you don't need the fill pass and you want only the borders. So let's make an example, hide the output, unhide the test layer again, select it, select the first step and click play. Now we can skip directly to the render borders only action, but before we must choose the, our combination of borders. This is because this last action will create the bevel layer based on the borders and not on the fill. So let's choose our combination of borders, close and save, select the last action and click play. And here is the result. Okay, let me rename this smart object. And as you can see, the layer structure and customization method also for this other workflow are the same. Now we will see how to deal with logos and designs that have more than one color. So let me open this example. As you can see, this logo is made of four colors and for best result, you will need to apply the embroidery process separately to each color. If you don't already have each color in a separate layer, you can easily do it in Photoshop. So for example, select the logo, select the one tool, then make sure that the settings of the one tool are like this on the top menu. Then click on one of the colors. I start with this yellow gold border. And then press Ctrl J or Command J for Mac on your keyboard to extract this color to a new layer. As you can see here, you have the new layer with this color extracted. Rename the new layer. Then select the logo again and do the same also for the other colors. Okay, now we can apply the embroidery process separately to each color. Remember that when you finish applying the process at one of the colors, you'll need to rename the output smart object with a custom name. I'm going to fast forward this part of the video. And here is the final result. 
with the four outputs. Now I will hide the cloth displays layer for red, white and black and leave it only on the gold because it's the layer which is more in contact with the texture. So let's do it. For the gold text, for the gold part, I will set 100% of cloth displays. And also we will move this layer at the bottom. There are two things left to do, which are customizing the borders and coloring the logo. You can customize the borders also after the coloring. You'll need to make a couple of tests to find out the best combination of borders for your logo. For example, in this logo I found out the that the white parts works better without any borders while the red parts works better with a combination of border 1 and border 2 so let's do it we'll hide this border here close and save then for the red part unhide the second border close and save close and save now there are two methods for the coloring, the first one is quick and easy, the second one takes longer but gives the best results. Okay, for the first method, hide all the color layers from all of the outputs. Once you hided all the color layers, unhide the original logo bring it to the top and set the blending mode to overlay you can also set the opacity to something lower than 100 percent to make it blend better with the elements below and here is the result the second coloring method consists of manually coloring each output using the adjustment layers created by the action I already did this while making the PDF guide of the plugin, so let's compare the two results. Here is the second coloring method. The first one again. Second. And that's all, thank you for your attention.